Ever since I was a kid, I was obsessed with the idea of dreams. I made short films, I tried to make art, I read a bunch. So, you know, I was pretty creative. You know, my dreams are also pretty out there sometimes. I would record them in dream journals and I would often just lose track of them. Soon I began to have lucid dreams. And then shortly after that, I began to have nightmares. But this is the thing, I enjoy having nightmares, as sadistic as that might sound. And I wanted to see if I could do the same thing with a few of my subscribers. <laughs> Tell me your dreams. My friend Peyton and our friend Tom just were talking one day. Somehow our topic of conversation changes into nightmares, and I start telling them about how nightmares can be really great storytelling devices. Then Tom gives me an idea. It's a very simple idea that was the inception of this video. A few years ago, some old friends and I were discussing our dreams, and we were specifically looking for ways to trigger lucid dreams. The method we were using was to constantly journal our dreams. By writing down something about our dreams every single day, even if we didn't dream, we could trick our brains into thinking that information is important. The hope was that by becoming more aware of our dreams, we could become aware that we were dreaming and enter a lucid state. Someone in that group had the idea to create a public dream journal in addition to our private ones. The public journal was mainly for fun, and to hold us all accountable for journaling every day. But as the journal progressed, things started taking a dark turn. Nightmares started to become more and more frequent, and falling asleep was getting harder for the entire group. Something about that dream journal was causing every single one of us to lose sleep. Strange things started to happen surrounding that chat. Journal entries started appearing overnight with no memory of them ever having been made, and one of our physical dream journals even went missing, despite no one having been around to steal it. Before things had a chance to get too bad, that friend group and I had a falling out, and I haven't spoken to any of them since. So what was the reason the group had nightmares? What if the server's channel had something to do with it? Could there even be a way to record that fact? And not much is known about dreams, but we do know a few things that may just be speculation, or they might just give us a deeper understanding of our minds. I was sitting in my living room on my couch, laying perfectly flat with my head propped up. I was facing the door that led down some stairs into my garage. There was a white fog that hung over the whole room and bright white light was coming in from the window to my left. My garage door then burst open and nothing was on the other side. Eventually an, an, an arm came up from below the door frame and smacked its head down on the floor beneath it. The thing on the other side of the door, it pulled itself up. It was like a person but it its arms and legs were trying to configure themselves like how a dog's would, so some of the joints were bent wrong. Its head was covered in mist, and I could only see two white glowing dots or eyes inside of the mist. The creature worked its way across my living room and made it to the couch I was trapped on. It stood over me and stared down into my eyes. Dream Channel was made in Lachim's cult, the dedicated server for this YouTube channel. Twelve volunteers consent to participation. They are given the role Charles after Mr. Charles, Charles, the gambit designed to turn Fisher against his own subconscious. The way Mr. Charles works in the film is that it involves telling the mark that they are dreaming. The other members of the server were also a part of the experiment. They were the control group. They interacted with their dreams the way that we do on a regular basis. The night the experiment started, I sent out a set of rules for the dreamers. Rule 1. The moment you wake up, write down your dream in as much detail as possible. You can write it directly onto here, or write it onto a paper and then take a picture and send it on here if you want to have a physical dream journal. Rule 2. 
If you do not have a dream, just say no dream today or do not remember. I also gave them a reminder to refrain from discussing the topic amongst each other or in a different server or even in that server itself. The channel itself had Charles unable to view the chat history, so all of their dreams would remain private. The experiment started on the 23rd of February and would end on the 20th of March. I am standing on a dock, stretching out over the dark water of the ocean. There are others on the dock, many of them fishing, but no one near me. Suddenly, the planks around me shatter as a massive whale leaps out from underneath the dock. It swallows me whole before disappearing into the depths once again. Inside the whale, I am falling, falling, falling. As I fall, lights begin to appear around me. I am falling through the cosmos. I fall for what feels like hours, until I am awoken by my body hitting something. I touched on why I think nightmares have amazing storytelling uh, capabilities, and let me explain why. If I were to tell you a story that I had written, a completely original work of fiction, and I tried to put it in the first person, and I told it to you through the main character's point of view as if I actually went through it, I don't think that it would be as effective as if I just told you a nightmare I had. The word here is that when I'm trying to tell you a story, I'm trying to convince you that it happened, but if I'm telling you about a nightmare I had, I don't need to convince you that I went through it. We both have this level understanding of what dreams are, and so you know that I perceived it as though it was actually happening, and that scared the shit out of me. I visit my own house in Lakewood, and I go to my room, and there's a hole in the ground with stairs spiraling down for a while. I can never get the courage to go down them because all I hear are screams of hell and demons pouncing towards me, and I freeze up. No one knows for sure what dreams are, but we do know what they might be for and what they might be. Do. One theory is that consciousness starts when dreams start. After about seven months in development, a human fetus actually spends a lot of their time asleep, and while they're asleep, they begin to dream because they fall into REM sleep. The purpose of dreams, or one of the proposals, is to help us face our fears. Take early humans, for example. To prepare us for fighting back a lion, we dream a lion chasing us around. The lion might catch up and maul us to death, but when we wake up, we now have the knowledge of what not to do when being chased around by a lion. It's a controlled space for facing our own fears. During a nightmare, the part of our brain that is responsible for controlling emotions responds better to fear-inducing dreams. Although dreams are not just unique to humans. UCL also had a study on rats' dreams. They were tasked to complete a maze, and then when they were asleep, they would track their sleeping patterns. And when they were in the maze, they had brain signals to remember which way to turn, or to tell itself to turn one way and when it was asleep those same brain signals went off so it was safe to say that the rat was dreaming about finishing the maze but if some of the parts of the brain are linked to movement then while you're dreaming and those same parts are going off why can't you move around homicidal sleepwalking is when you're moving about while you're asleep and kill someone. Ken Parks killed his parents-in-law in 1988. He is now a free man because he had no conscious decision of doing this murder. Thankfully, we have a mechanism in our brain that stops us from doing things that we dream in real life, and basically it paralyzes our entire body so that even though the signals are going around that you're moving about, your body is not actually moving. But there's a phenomenon where you wake up while your body is still paralyzed. This is called sleep paralysis. Your brain thinks that it's awake, but it tells your body that you're still asleep. However, your brain also thinks that it's still dreaming, so you start hallucinating. You start to see shapes out of shadows, as if you're going insane. The curtain that separates dreams from reality starts to blur itself. But we create our dreams as we perceive them. Which leads me to believe that dreams are just untapped 
imagination. Now in a dream, our mind continuously does this. We create and perceive our world simultaneously and our mind does this so well that we don't even know what's happening. I'm in the back room of a Target, dressed like a Target employee. There's no one to be seen and my walkie-talkie is dead. All the lights are at half because it's past closing time. I have no phone with me and I walk for hours in the same direction, passing rows and rows of shelves. There is no exit. There is no end, only Target stretching into the cosmos. Our hypothesis was pretty simple. By having people chronicle their dreams in a public Discord server, they could potentially influence each other's dreams, leading to a snowball effect of possible nightmares or regular dreams with a common theme. The process was easy enough to follow. Those who were selected just had to record their dream in either their own physical journal or write in the Discord chat, and those dreams were posted in the Discord server. During Phase 1, all dreams were shared in a channel with no history enabled, so everything shared in there was effectively private. During Phase 2, all dreams were shared to the entire group to hopefully get those dreams to influence each other. At the end of the experiment, we sent out a survey most of those in our experimental group reported remembering their dreams, with some answering as high as remembering six or more of their dreams in a single week. Those in the control group reported remembering far fewer of their dreams on average. Those in the experimental group reported having more nightmares, although not quite as many as we thought they would have. Most of those who took the survey reported their perceptions of reality changing over the course of the experiment. However, the most interesting response to me was that 64% of those surveyed reported trouble sleeping over the course of the experiment. The study is far from foolproof. It has plenty of issues from a design standpoint, including a small sample size and imprecise methods. But the general conclusion is that by chronicling your dreams in a group setting, you may have more nightmares and greater difficulty falling asleep. However, it may also lead to remembering more of your dreams in general, and almost half of those surveyed reported a positive experience in chronicling their dreams, with no one rating it as a negative experience. Thanks for having me on, Johnny. You can find me on Twitter at Tom's house 3 and on YouTube at Tom's House, and then you can also find me on Twitch at TM Gravy. Thanks again for having me on, Johnny. Wake up. Wake up. The more you try to recall your dreams, the easier it is to remember your dream when you have them. It trains the part of the brain that remembers dreams. So the stronger that muscle is, when you go back and dream, you start remembering more of your dreams. Simple as that. But we don't just dream during REM sleep. We dream so often at night that I think that we just don't recall most of it because our brain says it's not important. However, my theory is that our dreams aren't getting more creepy as we try and remember it. I don't think that we're making our brain make worse and worse dreams if we are to recall them. No, no, no. I think we just have fucked up dreams every night. Now we've just been trained to remember them better. It just makes you think about imagination. How quickly our mind can create worlds and make ideas that will scare the shit out of us. When you enter a dream, you don't quite remember how you got there. You're somehow always smack dab in the middle. It's only once you're awake when you realize something was actually wrong. My fascination with nightmares, however, does not end here. I don't think my mind will ever fully comprehend the idea that I could perceive a world with my mind created by my own mind without any body to perceive it with. When you're asleep, someone can open your eyelids and you wouldn't know a thing because your eyes don't see for you. Your brain perceives it. It's the same with your tongue or your other senses pretty much is that they completely shut off because you don't need them when you're dreaming. All of your senses are just completely shut off being perceived inside of your mind by something created by your own mind. Thanks for watching. Make sure to look out for our next video next month. Wake up.